Hey, we're live. March 21st, Derby Live. You're here with Rogue Traders. March 21st, Spring Equinox. Or it's the 22nd. It, it always changes. I don't know. You know. It's funny because in the Western world, spring was always on the Spring Equinox. But in a lot of the Eastern world, they say March 1st. They just say, you know, beginning of the month, but, but, you know, we, we you know, it, it, I don't know, just different cultures, I guess. What where did are you, you do? Going? Where are you going with this? I'm not going anywhere with it. I'm just happy it's the first day of spring. Uh, now, some <laughs> people say, no, the first day of spring was three weeks ago, man. I, oh, I, see. I guess, yeah. Anyways, uh, we've got a lot to talk about today. We've got a lot going on. Uh, we had some drama over the last, uh, you know, four or five days. Uh, big move, uh, 15%. 15% off all-time highs. No joke. Hmm. Uh, if you're new to crypto, meh, just another day in the office. But uh, or, or if you're used to crypto, but if you're, if you're new, it's uh, probably pretty hair-raising. Uh, got lots of interesting stuff today. I think today we're going to talk about – actually, here, let me bring up the slides. I actually did receive a, te- a, 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 what's a telegram call from a, an investment manager I know who uh-huh. owns Bitcoin for the first time. <laughs> very keen for you to ask me like my, my my view on what, what what was happening with the price i said i yawned i just said look just close your eyes it's, it's bitcoin just close your eyes and hold on for the ride <laughs> yeah all right so what do we got going on today the agenda is uh we're gonna look at the current market uh some interesting things to look at on the charts i hope you hope you enjoy that uh, we're going to do a little bit of live trading. Actually, we're probably not going to really do much live trading because on this particular account, there's not much to do. But we'll show you what you did, what we did a few days ago, what we're planning to do, what the account looks like. Uh, again, this is the synthetic miner account. Doesn't require a lot of tinkering, and in fact, it's practically stress-free compared to the other accounts we manage. Uh, so uh, I, I'm glad we're showing you guys that. We're going to talk a little bit about, about adjusting short in the money puts because I think it's very relevant. Uh, if you were selling puts to, you know, you want to accumulate Bitcoin, if the, if the market's going up, selling puts is a smart thing to do. We do it all the time. Then you get a 15% retracement and you're like, oh my gosh, what the heck's going on here? And how do I deal with this? Well, there's different ways to deal with it depending on um, your, your bias and the type of trader you are. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Well, if we have some time, we're going to look at the new order interface functionality uh, with futures, which is kind of cool. And then a short Q&A section at the end. So without further ado, let me uh, stop this and let's pop over some charts. Where are we here? Charts, charts, charts. There we are. Now I assume everyone can see that. Good old Ethereum. Good old Ethereum. I've I've got big expectations. I've got big hopes for Ethereum. Uh, We had a big move up, big move down. It's a pretty basic chart. It's not as intricate, intricate intricate as bitcoins uh but uh again we haven't been trading eth as much we just found that um we just weren't getting the same returns as we were on bitcoin now let's take a look at the big dog bitcoin this is cool this is very interesting because okay we had this ascending wedge we talked about that last week it was starting to break and i said look Only 60% of the time, that's going to break in the down. This time it did. Every person in the world was long. We knew there was going to be a pullback at some time. It could have went up to 100K and then pulled back. I don't know, right? Who who knows, right? So it wasn't all that unexpected. And if we look from tip to tail, tip to tail, we got there, you know, 15, 16, 17%. That's nothing in, in the world of Bitcoin. In the world of Bitcoin, it has an, a, a, a 10% move on average every 90 days, just normal course, never mind halvings and ETFs and every, all the other stuff going on, right? So what I found interesting here is when this was coming down, we were getting uh, you know the odd message, panicking, and even one from Richard or two. It's like, oh, my God, where's this thing going to? <laughs> and I said, well, you know what? I, this EMA here – uh, uh, this 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 is the 100 EMA on, on a four-hour chart. I said, look, I think it's going to cling to it. If it wicks down, I think it might come back up. But if it wicks down, stays down, we're probably bouncing off 200. Sure enough, 200. And coincidentally, just out of pure coincidence, it happened just to hit the bottom of this range, which is the previous resistance, which now supports. So technical analysis, you don't want to lean on it. 
100%, unless that's your job. But uh, it does help provide clues and, and a little bit of light in the dark um, and give you a bit of confidence to 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 make certain moves. What, what are you going to say? What are you going to say to disparage this? No, I was going to say actually, I, I did notice uh, during during the whole sell off that you had this sort of air of calm about you because you you had this sort of inner inner peace that your EMAs were all in, in line. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much, Richard. I, I was expecting some. <clears throat> well, I was expecting something else. So thank you very much. <laughs> so, uh, you know, hey, you know, so that and, you know, you can look in hindsight and say, OK, yeah, well, that worked. Well, when it was plunging down here, it looked pretty damn scary, didn't it? Mm -hmm. But that would have given me confidence to maybe sell put spreads down in this area, thinking that, you know what, you know, it might come down through, but it's probably going to be sticky here for a while. Now, the interesting thing is, is we're right smack in the middle, aren't we? Look at this. We are right smack in the middle between the high and down here. So what are we doing? Something's right in the middle? <laughs> well, obviously, we sell iron condors, don't we? <laughs> That's what I do. You know what? If one side gets tested, eh, okay, we'll just deal with it. We'll roll it. We'll, 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 we'll adjust it. We, well, we can adjust both sides if we want to. And I think uh, I had put on an iron condor trade just uh, a couple hours ago, actually. And uh, that's short term. Short term. This isn't a 60 day stuff I'm doing. I'm doing stuff short term because in 60 days we could be at 100K. I still believe that could be true. Uh, you know, Richard and I had a, had a chat about this on our uh, daily live stream, which we do every day for uh, on Patreon and for our silver members. And we talked about this having and, you know, previous havings. They don't really actually do too much during the having typically. Could this be a, a quiet April? And maybe this is going to be our range for the next few weeks? Maybe. I'm inclined to think we're probably going to keep pressing up, um, especially as grayscale outflows probably subside. Who knows? I suspect we might keep going up. But I wouldn't be surprised if this week or maybe over the weekend we went down to low 60s again. It wouldn't shock me in the least. But now we've got a bit of a bottom. You know, we, we've, got, we've got this area um, here. Where's my little box here? We've got this area down here. We've kind of got a little bit to lean on. And of course, we're going to lean on 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 all time highs because it's going to take some effort to do that. So I'm happy to uh, play this range for a little while. Maybe it'll play out for two or three weeks. We'll see. Other than that, I think that's the trade to do. Now, I think the 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 big we're, we're saying if if, it, if it's I mean we're at 75 vol now, and if we do nothing for two weeks at 75 vol, that's a, that's a lot of premium coming in. That is a hell of a lot of premium coming in. Hmm. So. You know, we we were even talking today about some of the stuff that we parked longer dated. So we got, in, you know, some positions were under pressure. We parked them in April, May, June, whatever. And we talk about bringing those forward all the time. Those are still really expensive. You know, if we look at the volatility surface, you know, everybody is convinced it's going up, you know, over the rest of the year. Uh, if it doesn't. That volatility is going to rush in. Or th that that crush is going to happen quite quick. Um, so it's interesting. So we don't want to necessarily bring it all forward. So we've got a few. We've got a few plays on that, haven't we? We've got a couple of uh, yeah. one by three plays and one by two plays. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's it's an interesting time. I know for a lot of people, it was a little bit stressful uh, having that that pullback. But let's face it, in in the big picture, fifteen percent is pretty normal. We, we ran up so much, ah, you know, it's got to happen. Everyone was over leveraged long. The dealers needed to get inventory back. It's going to happen. So, um, and um, once one person cascades, everybody cascades, right? Because every exchange out there is offering 50x leverage, um, which means that you've only got to get a 2% move. And everyone who's uh, gone balls out is going to get wiped. And then he's going to cause the next layer down to get wiped and so on all the way down to people like us who work that high leverage in the end i think maximum two two x and even we got under pressure in, the, in that uh sell-off um quite uh so yeah i can't imagine how painful that was for, for many people who were more highly leveraged well we got hundreds of millions of liquidations so uh, yeah, yeah i think over the week billions yeah yeah, live by the sword, die by the sword, right? Actually, Richard, why don't you share the that uh, synthetic miner account and we can show people. I think at one point we were up to 27 or 28% or 30% leverage maximum. Um, yeah. You know, normally we're running at around 20. 
it, it was it was really <laughs> I don't want to say it's the most stress free trading ever, but it's practically it's certainly the most stress free account we manage. <laughs> yeah, so this is our synthetic mining account that we're running purely for this channel. Um, and I think I think we we felt a little bit uncomfortable about some of our um, puts that started to get in the money. Um, and they're always going to, on a 15% move down, they, you know, it's going to get in the money. So rather than just hold the line and sit there in the money, we decided to roll some, some things out and down. Um, so at the moment, uh, so, that, so yeah, so what, sorry, what you can see here is the full extent of the, that's, that's what we've been through for the, since the, this, since we started this trading account, we've been through that spike and wick. We've been through that run up, that wick down. We've been through that wick, that wick, that wick, that wick, that all these massive wicks and this huge sell-off plus the bounce. Um, if this had been an email of the market than, than Bitcoin, um, uh, I think people would have been fleeing it in droves. It's it terrifying. Anyway, um, we've actually got through all of this. Actually, actually our equity is still up. Uh, our, our starting equity was 0 0.0825. And our equity is now 0 0.0835. And our cash on account, oh, I've got the spreadsheet, I should show you the spreadsheet. The cash balance is 0 0.0907. So putting that into perspective um, with our little Hong Kong book of spreadsheets. Um, so the USD, sorry, the BTC cash. Is 0 Can you make it a little bit bigger? Uh, sorry, sorry, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see, uh, zoom, how do I zoom? Control plus. It's on the left side of the toolbar there. You can just, yeah, yeah. See the 100% right there to the left, a little bit more left. Oh, yeah. Yep. 150. There we are. So the important numbers here are BTC cash because we're looking to accumulate BTC. So BTC cash is up um, uh, 0 0.008 since the start. Uh, the equity is roughly the same. So we're, you know, we're running mock to market losses on some of our positions, but uh, that's okay. Um, and then in USD terms, the cash is up 800 bucks, even with that big sell-off. Um, and the US equity is still up. So after 21 days, uh, BTC return, so it's half a percent return on, on our BTC, 7% um, in terms of dollars. Had you, had you hodled, you'd have had nothing. So we're still doing better, better than hodling. Um, and we're doing better than hodling in USD terms. And annualizing that out, um, our spectacular uh, 580% annualized is now down to a less spectacular 10%. But watch this space. I think that will, that will come back. And our, um, <laughs> our super mega 48,000 US dollar return annualized is down to a mere 230% return. Um, bear in mind that Citadel, the most successful, biggest hedge fund in the world, um, aims for 25%. 25 um, so if you're doing this, you're already beating them. Um, uh, yeah, so that's that's that. I think in terms of the um, positions, because <clears throat> it's important to have some context here, right? Um, so this twenty second uh, got bought back this morning, didn't it? I think we we was we, just, we heard the ding go off. Uh, yep. the, yeah, early in the morning. The order was in there, so that was just a there was a position here got bought back at 10, 10 bips. Um, we've rolled some stuff for from twenty ninth of March out to April. I, th I think it, we might have rolled it from 5th of April to end of April just to get it deep out of the money. So we've pushed these positions, premium neutral, right down into the money in, in April. And our view is that, you know, that will take some time to decay if we're just relying on decay. But actually, um, if you look at, say, two weeks' time, the 56,000 puts currently 235. In two, in two weeks' time, 56,000 is going to be... Uh, one two five, so they they half in value, and then in another week's time, fifty six, uh, there'll be almost uh, time to well, they'll be in a position to shove them right back up at uh, one week. Um, in fact, they will be one week expiry at that point. We won't be worrying about that. We'll be we'll be selling more. So I think um, it looks like a daunting you know amount of time, but actually it'll come it'll pass pretty quickly. And in the meantime, today. I think this morning we put on a new put spread to replace the, the put that got bought back overnight. Um, we just sold the 6460 spread uh, again because there's three days to expiry, and we just wanted 30 basis points. Sorry, 30 basis points over three days, 10 basis points a day. And in actual fact, we we, we pulled in f uh, more like 40 or 50 basis points, haven't we? 
um, uh, and that yeah it was I think it was 50 when we sold it because we thought well if we're going to buy back the short leg at 10 and in fact I should put the order in now just in case um, then that gives us a 10 basis point buffer which means if we, if we have to roll it it's going to cover the costs and so on um, so all all good there um, and this this account only has to make um, reduce limit yeah create order uh, this account only has to make 10 basis points a day to increase the account value by the, the number of Bitcoin by 50% per year, which is more than enough because Bitcoin, according to Michael Saylor, uh, in 2030, Bitcoin is going to be worth $4.7 million. Kathy Wood thinks it's a million dollars. We think we think she's an idiot uh, and Michael Saylor is far more believable. So we're going for the $4 million dollar mark. Great. Um, so uh, the, the slander lawsuits should be in... Anytime. No, no I, I didn't. I didn't say she is an idiot. I said we think she's an idiot. So it's, it's an opinion, not not a statement of fact. Fair enough. Fair um, enough. And uh, and that would mean that this account in 2030 would be worth 10 million dollars uh, if we just just do this, right? just that that one stupid contract every three days. Fair enough. Uh, so that's how that's how easy it is yeah. in a rising market. Yeah, and, they, and, and we can see here that we're not really doing a lot. Um, we've got space with everything. Yeah, if the market does takes another 10% move down, well, we'll have to adjust some things. But it's kind of easy to lean on this strategy right now because this strategy implies that we have a bullish sentiment. That's why if, if, if we thought for a minute that Bitcoin, oh, you know, we're, we're probably going back down to 20K, this would not be our strategy. We're doing oh, well, this because we want if, to lean on. This. Yeah, if, if I thought that, I'd be trading. I'd be trading gold only. Gold. Uh, I, you know, I'm well, well, well known for liking gold, um, and at the moment, I like Bitcoin. And, um, I, I you know if I didn't think Bitcoin was going to out accelerate gold in the medium term, then I wouldn't bother. Um, You're basically our version of gold member. Yes. So uh, we don't have a lot of time here. So just let's let's just quickly actually actually before we do anything, I, I did put a quick poll up. Check out the poll. Will will Bitcoin see new highs by the end of March? Yes or no? Richard, if you just want to take a quick look at that order entry box, let's cover that for futures and then let's jump into talking about managing those in the money short puts. Yeah, okay. So uh, in case you haven't noticed that there, Darabit have done some great work on their UI. Um, and in fact, uh, there must have been some back-end work as well. I, I know this very well because I build exchanges or used, used to, and I put, a, I, put, I put an exchange together in the past. I know how hard this is. Um, and so they've added an extra order type, uh, which we in the business call one cancels other. Um, and that means that you can go in and put a limit order in. So in this case, you can go pay, I don't know, 67, 500, uh, sorry, 67, that, uh, yeah, uh, uh, six. Um, order for um, point one of a Bitcoin, um, and you can then say, actually, you know what? I'm whoop, yes, uh, I'm happy to take profit at sixty eight thousand, uh, and then I want to put a stop loss in at sixty seven, uh, sixty say six ninety. Uh, you probably you probably get killed doing that, but um, and then you can go whack buy. And that will actually set up three orders in the system for you. Um, first of all, the which uh, we, we call linked orders or one cancels other orders. Um, so it'll it'll put in the limit order to buy once it's bought. It'll engage the take profit and the trigger and, and the stop loss orders. Um, and if the take profit is triggered, then that, that will cancel the stop loss. And if the stop loss is triggered, it'll cancel the take profit order. So super nice way to just sit set up the trade and then go off and play golf or ski or do whatever you've got to do, walk the dog, um, and just like, you know, hands-free yeah. gambling, right? It's, yeah, uh, or, or if you're a millennial, you'll go play Frisbee golf. <clears throat> really? And I, that's what they do. It's very popular with them. You they think millennials got their, they got, they got their, Yeah, yeah, they got their neck beards and their Frisbee I think, golf. It's, it's very they, interesting. I think they play things like Quake. and It's a whole, it's a whole culture. Things. No, it's a, right. I'm, t I'm telling you, I'm, I'm more in tune. Okay. Okay. I, I'm, okay. <laughs> it's tapping your inner, your inner, inner millennial. I'm hip. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, hey, so let, let's talk a little bit about this. So a lot of people felt a lot of pain, and this is no joke. You know, they're they're in whether you're long futures, long underlying, 
uh, long calls, short puts, anything that's a bullish sentiment, you're, you're feeling some pain the last the last uh, week because you know we had a 15% move down. So here's the thing. It depends on, number one, you got to keep margin free. You got to keep, because if you don't have margin free, you can't make any adjustments. You get hog tied and you might have to dump things. So you might have to sell some futures in order to, to maintain that position. You might have to buy more puts. You might have to roll some things out. Normally, when we're trading, we're, we're a little bit agnostic in terms of direction. We're like, I don't know, up or down, who knows, right? But this is a unique situation with Bitcoin right now where we're, we're bullish like most people are. So we want to remain long in a market that's falling. It's kind of counterintuitive for me. It's like, why the hell am I doing this? You know, normally, I'll just be short. Okay, let's go down for a while. Fine. But you don't want to get ragdolled. So the idea is to just to ease the pain as much as you can until it turns around. Now, that's different from praying and hoping <laughs> that a position is going to go your way because that's not a way to trade. This is only because we've got that bullish sentiment. Otherwise, we wouldn't be staying long delta in a declining market. And just to be clear, I have tried the praying method in the past, and <laughs> I, I can assure you that, that markets punish it severely. <laughs> like we, we hear your prayer, and we're yeah, going to um, double down. <laughs> yeah. like markets, can, it, markets are like any, any other opponent. They can, they can sense your fear. You've got to have none. So basically... You want to limit the amount of pain. You have to accept what well, your equity is going to fall no matter what. So that's why you can't pay too much of attention because because the underlying asset's going down. All your positions are going to get to. Okay, you have to accept that your equity is going to go down. That's life of a trader. But you also recognize that as it starts to pick it back up, that'll all flow back in. So you just need to protect your positions. For us. If things got at the money or slightly in the money, it depends where on the chart. If, if we're feeling comfortable, if we think, oh, man, this thing could go down to 50K. Well, you know what? We might be dumping some things. We might be rolling some things. We might be looking to get back in aggressively. But there's also times, and what we did was we decided to split some positions. So a third of it, we kept it there. We thought, you know what? Let it go in the money. Let's see what happens if we have to adjust it. On the day of expiry, when there's no extrinsic value left in it, so be it. We'll adjust one, you know, uh, same expiry. Maybe we'll strangle it out. We'll adjust another one, the last third, down and out. So we're not putting all our eggs into one basket. Because, you know, it sucks. It sucks bad when you roll all your positions. You spend all this time, and, oh, my God, I, I rolled everything. Oh, my God. And that goes right back up, and you didn't need to roll a damn thing. <laughs> but you never know at the time, right? You yeah. never know. It always looks scary. So that's why we, we divvy it up. So it's hard to remain long in, in a market that's going down. We had to expect the correction. Now, we had a nice bounce back up. Also with, up. Who knows? So, sorry, also with saying, Shane, that we also buy, bought puts. Um, we, we 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 had lots of puts cover in, in place already because we never we never sell cover, um, but we bought more and we had to sit there and actually just spend money for three days uh, and and, we, and it felt, feels painful because your 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 theta's negative and you're spending more money and you know it's going to get worse, but you've got to protect your capital. If if it means taking a few hundred bucks loss on wasted wasted puts, so be it. Pay pay it. Um, and. And also, we we resisted really hard the, the temp temptation to keep rolling things into strangles because we just kind of thought the market's just been at seventy two k, and here it is now at sixty. Could easily be. I mean, it got it got here in a day and a half or whatever it was, two days. It could easily get back to seventy in two days, and I don't want to have to be managing now sixty five k calls, you know, which are now five thousand dollars in the money. And and sure enough, you know, uh, what happened? FOMC was marginally dovish a bit and market sprang back into into life um so i'm really glad that we, we resisted that temptation yeah no good good point and again because we were bullish we're scared to death the selling calls in the market that's <laughs> going down which is something we would normally do yeah so it's just a little bit it, it is a little bit uncomfortable well let's face it it's uh you know trading can be uncomfortable and you gotta get used to that so the main rate that there's, there's one thing I, I want to say, and I said this to our paying members, um, and, I, and it's important. So I'll say it to you: uh, the way to avoid discomfort and fear and all of those, all of those things, is to keep your leverage low. Um, you need to 
internalize this, it's really true. Bitcoin is a 70 to 80 vol asset. You don't need leverage with a 70 to 80 vol asset. You don't need any. Th th that, that kind of vol, you know, you can make a fortune with it. If you just trade unleveraged, buy, sell, you know, or sell uh, one times your notional in, in your, your underlying in terms of notional and options, it's enough. You can make enough money. You don't have to uh, cane it. I mean, we do on some of our accounts. We get punished for it. Um, but you can get rich um, by just trading super, super low risk. Margin never going above 15% in normal markets and under stress, it goes up to 40. So what? No one, no one's afraid, right? Um, As you can imagine, Richard was not a contributing writer to get rich or die, try. Or die, try. <laughs> no, uh, my, my, the, the book I want to write is uh, I Died Rich. <laughs> okay. All right. Hey, uh, yeah, hey, and you know what? If 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 you're uh, if you weren't in the market, or you're light in the market. Maybe you got out. I think it would have took balls of iron to to short that up there. But mm. I'm sure some people did. Uh, uh, you know, the, the market was really overextended, so it kind of made sense. Can you imagine how you'd feel if you shorted it at 74 and got it right at that moment? You'd feel like a god, wouldn't you? Be insufferable. Indeed, <laughs> indeed. You then go on to make all kinds of terrible decisions, feeling vulnerable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if if you if you're new to the market, well, you know, you might if you think, hey, we could pull back in the '60s. I, I'm I'm a huge fan of never committing everything at once. I never do that. You know, maybe scale in through the low '60s. Could we go back down and revisit the '50s or even a crazy move down to 45? Yeah, anything's possible. It's crypto, but you know. Too many people. I, th I think now the FOMC is in with their like we're honestly guys we really are going to lower lower rates. Um, they, they basically said that they're going to lower rates for four times over the next two years. Um, that, that that's they've <laughs> they've given the whole of Wall Street the uh, the the you know, red rag to a bull, isn't it? Go go buy it, go fill your boots. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Oh, I guess all I'm trying to say is uh, you know scale in. Don't use a lot of margin. You know, maybe look at if, if we dip down, maybe sell a risk reversal or sorry, uh, uh, yeah, uh, buy, buy a risk reversal. You're, you're selling the puts, do it as a spread. Use that money to buy some calls. Mm. Maybe scale in, get some futures. You know, just don't go crazy. I think we could be in this mid range for a little while, but uh, you know, it's crypto. You got to expect pullbacks. All right, um, I think we've done enough there. Let's let's go to a few questions. I know we've got a couple of questions coming up. And uh, just before we get to questions, I will close the poll here. 81% of people see, think on this call, think we're going to be at new highs by the end of March. I mean, no, they're, they're saying no. Oh, sorry. You're right. No. You're, no. End of March. Hang on. Uh, yeah, I think, I think that's a reasonable call, right? Uh, I think, I think it would be early for, for a bull rally right now. You know, it's funny. You know why I, I, I didn't read that right? It's because I, Sinking in my brain that everybody would think yes, it would be, but no. I, th I think there. I think we've got more a more savvy audience. I think new highs by end of March is is. But there's only there's only a week until the end of March. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah. So oh, where did the month go? Yeah, and uh, I mean end, end of April is possible, but even that maybe not right. Um, I think okay. we could be in for some sideways actions. That's why I'm happy to sell our in condors right Do, now. Given that we've had three days of outflows now from ETFs. Um, I think all that's happening, to be honest, there is that people are selling their GBTC and it's going to take like a week for that money to recycle back into iBit or whatever. So I think it's going to be all, oh, no, the ETFs are all failing. Everyone's drawing their money out. And then next week it's going to be, oh, my God, everyone's buying ETFs, you know. So, And that's the way it goes with crypto. It's it's sort of that <laughs> very typical lemming sort of a move. And when crypto is going down, it's like, going to zero. Get out now. It's it's, it's all bullshit. <laughs> when, it's, yeah. when it's going up, it's like a million. It's going to a million. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way people are i've never i've never traded anything which induces such hysteria even in me <laughs> all yeah. right we have a question here, a couple questions here uh first one from core what do you guys think about the new segregated uh pm engine on deribit are there benefits regarding the older pm engine well we've actually switched some and we've kept some on the legacy yeah i prefer the legacy right now but uh what are your thoughts richard i'll show you one thing that's really good about the new one um, the, the, these um, minus four, three, two, one business that they need to convert that back into percentages because that's ridiculous. You can't even read what the, you don't even know what that is. Um, I think that's in like jumps of 
I don't know, fractions of the 15% or something like that, but they need to put the percentage numbers in. Yeah, because it's not, it can't be standard deviations, I don't think. The numbers no, no, are... no, that would be way too small. Um, what's really brilliant about this this system is they've added on what happens in shock situa super shock situations of plus 50, 100, 200, 500. That's good because it means that forces you to go, go, go and buy cover if you're short. And because you never want to see a massive red number, red number over here. Great. I think that's good. And I think the same on the downside. Just make sure you're covered on the on the tail risk puts. Fantastic. Um, the 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 number here is a minor annoyance, but doesn't really matter. You, know, you can kind of figure it out in your mind. Minus four is roughly fifteen percent down. The one massive failure on here, and if anyone's from Deribit's watching, is that what you took away was the the, the single most useful feature of the previous portfolio margining system was it would show you what your margin will be after expiry tomorrow. And, it, and today it doesn't, it do, and the new one doesn't do that. And that is such a massive loss. We need that. We use it every day. And so now we're in, we're in the dark. So if you, anyone from Deribit is watching, please put that back in. Uh, that's what I think about the new margin system. Otherwise, otherwise it's the same as the old one, really. The, the, it produces more or less the same numbers. Who cares? Yeah, it's, it's you know, when we, when we were looking at one system versus the other, it was, you know, maybe 1% difference or yeah. it, it wasn't a big difference. Uh, okay, uh, question from Stan. How do you manage puts calls? Do you sell when price hits and simultaneously sell on another strike or wait for some time and see the bounce? Yes and yes. Um, we we fix a price target for the entire spread. And we'll often go and look on the combo market to see if we can get that spread on the com on the combo market. At the moment, there is not, not enough liquidity. This is something that Deribit acknowledged and they're going to solve. Um, so, but we have a look anyway. Because if you can execute on the combo market, we only pay one fee for the two legs. So that's definitely worth having a look at. But at the moment, you can actually often get a better price by legging in, uh, by tra trading the two outright separately. And what we'll do is we'll set up the orders for the two outrights, the price we want to pay. And if one gets filled, we'll just move the price on the other one to get it to just to slot it in and make sure it's done. Um, unless, we've, unless it's a, it's a really flat market and we are going to chance it, sometimes we'll do that. But if, it's, if the market's moving, we just want to get the thing done. Yep. But, cool. when, uh, when, but when yeah, but when Deribit have solved this com combo markets liquidity business, um, we're definitely going to be using that a lot. And uh, for anyone interested, if if you're on Deribit on the top left uh, under the strategy button, you'll you'll see the uh, uh, combo market come up. Uh, again, it's not we haven't had a lot of luck because there's not a lot of liquidity there, but hopefully that'll get better soon. Uh, last question here, and we're out of time. A uh, question from Gene. I want one second, Philip. If you, uh, we can't, we can't bring you in because we we don't have enough licenses to let you speak. But um, please do just type the question in the Q and A section, and we'll answer it. Good catch. Uh, Gene says, "Is there ways someone can do quantitative strategies in crypto options, being retail only?" Yes, uh, we do it. Um, what's the real question here? Of course, Ken. There's an API. You can hook up whatever you want to the API. Um, so Deribit doesn't have, you know, inbuilt robots that will do quantitative, quantitative strategies for you. I'm sure that would give them all kinds of legal issues if they did, because then who's trading the account? And you know, uh, there's a whole whole issue of being, well, advisory, uh, um, which is a legal minefield. But you can hook up your computers to the API. You can write something in I, I use C++. People use Python, Rust, whatever. Um, and there is load. There's loads of uh, open source code out there already to hook up to the exchange and you can do whatever quantitative strategy you like. Um, I, I run one actually. Um, okay. Uh, I think that's about it for today. We actually kept pretty close to our 30 minutes uh, today, surprisingly. Um, hey, yeah, it's been a little bit of a rough ride for some people. I mean, if you've been riding Bitcoin since uh, 30 or 40, it's no big deal. It's just, you know, just off your high watermark, not a big deal. Uh, for some people who maybe got in a bit late, you know, this pullback might have hurt a little bit. Eh, you know what? It's natural. It's part of the whole process. It had to happen. Uh, if you're going to if you're going to trade any asset, you've got to have a four year time horizon or better, right? You got to you, you can't think I'm going to make get rich this year and then go and live my paradise life. You, you, you no, you're going to walk through shit for the next decade. That's that's the the, the essence of being alive. Um, it's it's not it's not the victory. It's the fight that, that brings value to your life. But if you trade consistently and carefully over that time and you keep your thesis straight and you don't over leverage, you will end up super rich and happy that you did it. 
Hang on, that's completely contrary to what that YouTuber with the Lambo said. Yes, he's a dick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hey, good stuff. Hey, it's it's been a wild market. We expect things to calm down a little bit, and, and, and by calm down, I mean I kind of expect it to hold that sixty to seventy five k range for the next <clears throat> little while, and I'm happy to uh, sell on each side of it. It's uh, a hell of a range, by the way. It, it is a hell of a range. If, uh, it, down it, 60s, if, you're, if you're saying it's going to hold sixty to seventy five range. What you're saying is it's going to shoot up and down by 15, 20 percent, uh, no. uh, like a, like a mad thing over the next. No, few no, years. I I didn't say it was going to stay. I, I think it'd be confined in there. Whether it just goes from sixty to sixty-seven, oh, I, I don't know. I but, no. but I don't think it'll bust outside of there. Now, if if we go to the top of that range, I'll be a bit careful. Maybe I'll buy some puts. Maybe if it goes to the bottom range, I'll probably buy some calls or I'll do some risk reversals. I'll, I'll probably try to take a little bit of directional advantage, assuming it's going to deviate to the mean or, or, or uh, yeah, re revert to the mean and kind of move back to the middle of the range. But I, we'll I, see. I got a question. How, how, if yeah. if it gets if it gets up to seventy five k fast, um, and that's that's then looking like a breakout. What? Where's the next level? There is no next level. <laughs> it's just going to go. I, yeah. You know, here's the thing is because I, I, it's hard to say because I think there's a, there, there might be a, a real liquidity, a real supply problem. If, if that big move happens, why did that happen? Hmm. I, 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 it's anyone's guess. Uh, the only thing we can do is, is uh, if it shoots up to, let's say it shoots up to 100K, there's a big pullback. Well, I suppose 73, 75 would be the first area I'd look, you know, for a pullback. Uh, that'd be a twenty-five percent pullback, but so, so I think I think um, so that that tells you right. If you're if you're going to be short calls, you probably want to make sure that you're also long like a bunch of hundred k calls. Um, you know, lots of them at super low value, and I know it's wasted money, but still, if it gets up there, you, you won't feel like a waste. Yeah, because vol, vol, vol will be one hundred and thirty, and th those those at the money with one day to run will be like two hundred basis points per per contract. <laughs> Or more yeah we always we always have cover we have long term cover and we'll often double cover because uh it's just uh we've seen it happen too many times crypto is its own animal it's not the s p it's uh it's its own animal it, it will buck and try and throw you yeah so that that's my training strategy going forward hey we're out of time uh let's see what happens during this week I expect uh, I expect we're we're going to see uh, we're going to have something to talk about next Thursday. So until then, happy trading, everyone. I will see you next week.